This presentation is brought to you by the City of Greensboro's Economic Development and Business Support Office. The first step, and I'll pass out a booklet later. I didn't want to pass out at the beginning because I didn't want everybody to be looking through the booklet. But the um, first step is, as I mentioned earlier, to register your company in this vendor link system. And in the time you're registering in vendor link, you're also able to register or to request certification as a hub company. You come through our website, and our website is, is getting better. We, we have a good website. All of state government uh, went through some upgrades on websites. But coming to our website to start the hub certification process, you, you, do, you do that. And as you see here, there's a tab that will say certification, and a tab to click to say request hub certification. And then you'll get to a page again that says, OK, now you're ready to do your registration and certification. You read a page. Let me see if it's coming up. OK, this is our website. And um, you notice the tabs on the left column. And again, we have certain quick links as well. And then our page will take you to some of our programs and course services, as you see, the HUB certification tab. We have certain forms and documents that you might need. We have certain reports that uh, are available. We have some frequently asked questions. We have uh, resources where we might even refer you to Greensboro's office or Charlotte's office through what we call networking links. We have uh, bid opportunities. That tab will actually bounce you to the Office of Purchase and Contract where they actually have different ways you can search jobs. They may have bids by category, bids by location, um, different ways you can bounce into their whole system of, of jobs that are listed at this time that you might want to take a look at. Um, we have a tab that will take you to different purchasing agencies. And then we have a tab for search for hub vendors. And one of the benefits of being hub certified is now if I'm looking for you, I'm looking for um, a plumber and you're a plumber, I can come to the hub website and I can go to search for hub vendors. It'll eventually take you to a page where you have a bunch of open you know, things to fill in, blanks to fill in. Well, obviously, you don't know Grover is a plumber. But you could pull up a section that says plumbers. You can, you can highlight plumbers. And then you have a county section. You could highlight Guilford. And then you could press search with nothing else. Even though there might be 10 or 15 other things you can fill in, you can take the, you know, this is all you know. You're looking for a plumber in Guilford, and you're hoping they're hub certified. So once you do the Guilford County tab, the plumber tab, search, hopefully some folks will pop up. And now you, have, now you see who's certified hub. Now, there may be many other minority companies in Guilford, but these folks have gone through the trouble to be hub certified. So now, a lot of times, the government uh, contracts want hub participation. So now you're able to say, OK, good, I can get a hub certified company on this job. And if you're a hub certified company, you're wanting them to find you so you can have an opportunity to bid the job. So that's the benefit of being in the system. What you do is now out there, and if I'm looking for your service or your good, I can track it, track it down through the Hub website. There's a calendar of events. So we're, we're uh, trying to you know, let you know about things like today. We may put it on our website that there's an annual business summit going on in Guilford today. So if you're a Hub company over here in this area, you'd come to this today. So that's how our web page looks. I think it's actually changed now. It's been upgraded, but we have a good web page. This screen is, as you are going through the certification, the third one down saying vendor registration and hub certification process. That would be what you would choose. <laughs> and now you read through that. This is telling you that this site is a division of purchasing contract, and we're making this vendor registration available to you. It is your responsibility to keep all this information current. And what we're getting at there is email addresses. Generally, in this day and age, especially through this system, this vendor system that the state has, 90% of your contact is going to be by email. And a lot of times, you may send our office, oh, hey, hub office, my email has changed. Well, the fact of the matter is we cannot upload your information. When you set up your hub account, which you're doing now in your registration, 
you choose your own um, password and username. You keep that, that's yours. So if you want to change addresses in the future, change what you do, add a good or a service, change your email, even change some of your ownership information, you have to be the one that goes in and, and does that. Now, of course, a lot of folks forget their username and password, and we have a, a number and a person to call to get that information. But this is letting you know that you're about to register. If you don't use your own um, information or if you don't update your email, a lot of times it will eventually just be um, bumped out of the system. Be, uh, through an annual kind of upgrade or just the way person contract sort of goes through the system occasionally. And again, too, just because you're in here does not mean you're going to get a contract, okay? Um, frankly, um, you probably know if you've done any government work, but even in private sector, you know, it's all about your qualifications, number one, and the amount you're going to charge the person to do the work. So, you know, you could be qualified and you could be, you know, too high, and or you could be not qualified and just can't do the work anyway. But you have an opportunity, and that's what we're trying to make sure through this whole hub initiative is that more and more hub certified companies get notified of a bid opportunity that you may not have otherwise known about. And now it's on you to present your company and make your bid. And we, you know, and, and people do win bids. You guys do win bids. This is some of the information, how the page looks. Uh, one of the things you, you want to have is a federal ID number. You don't want to necessarily use your social security number. Federal ID numbers are easy to get now. You can just go right online, irs.gov, and boom, you can have it in five minutes. That's not a problem. Um, your email address at the bottom there, you see that's what we want. If you don't even enter one there, then you really can't even go forward in this registration process. But as I say, once you have your username and password, you set up your user ID, and then you set up your password, then you have that. And then you can go in and out of your own profile. You'll see in a moment what your profile will end up looking like. Now you're entering your company information. Again, you can see that's pretty straightforward, your company name. What we do want, though, is the contact name to be the owner, the majority owner. If Grover is supposed to be the majority owner, even though Sam is my chief assistant and Sam is doing all this work and I don't know a thing about him doing this hub registration stuff, I don't want Sam to be the contact person. Ideally, I want the owner to be the contact person. You know, so keep that in mind. Uh, again, I guess that's information you can always go back in and change because a lot of times we want to make sure the owner is getting the information, not the administrative assistant or not the chief lieutenant, because that lieutenant or that administrative person might actually leave and go to work someplace else, and they're still getting the notices and not, uh, and not the owner. Um, a lot of times that also goes for the email. A lot of times we see where the administrative staff uses their email, and it's still not going to the owner email. You can understand why that can be uh, not good. So. Um, this is where you enter all that information, fax numbers, phone numbers, and so forth, emails. At the bottom, you see check here if you're a small business. It's not a certification that we're not certifying small businesses here. There's a program that does that, but we don't do that. But this is more for record keeping purposes in the Office of Purchase and Contract. And so um, that box does not give you any special status. That's internal for our own uh, statistical purposes. Uh, your next page is when you get to the page where you're going to define your business group. Basically, which category of a historically unutilized business do you claim to fit in? If, the, again, you own 51% or more of the company, and you, can, in this case, it was a minority company, but you can see how that is. You have different boxes and circles to put your check mark in and so forth, and you move past that page. And now you, this page comes up, and you print it for your records. And this is basically, um, again, going over some of the requirements to be HUB certified. Um, it may explain to you that you know, there is a process. That it, it can take up to you know, two or three months, or it can, it can be done very quickly. It just depends on your fact situation. Some folks are cut and dry. If I'm an attorney, I'm, 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 I've got my own license, I'm certified, I want to be certified as a minority person in the, in the, in the system, they're not going to have to look and ask who's the attorney? I mean, I'm the attorney. So, I mean, I, that kind of certification could be done like on the spot almost if I have all the other paperwork. There is an application and we'll get to that as well. But at the bottom of this page, you have to, what we call, accept the terms. I accept these terms. 
it's basically you click on that. So now you print this page out. So you now understand that you're in this process to be HUB certified and you agree to our terms. Next, you will then fill in the actual specific ownership information. You'll see in this case, type of ownership. Uh, we recognize sole proprietors. We recognize corporations, LLCs are very popular, um, partnerships. Um, there are some that actually may even be a part of a, a franchise, um, you know, like fast food or whatever. So those categories come up on the drop down. And then we have the start date, and that's, you know, you know when you started your business. And then you see at the bottom where your name, Joshua, is going in there. And then you come over, you've owned it nine years, how much percent do you own? And then you designate the race or the sex. And again, you can see that's sort of double checking the, uh, the status. Okay, but at the bottom of this page, um, there's a question that's important, and it says that is the person who is the majority ownership person also the person that's in daily management and control of the company? Ideally, you want to be able to check that yes. Again, anybody has access to our database coming through our website. So you can be out of state or anywhere in this state, come to the Hub Office website, search Hub vendors, and find me or you in there. So it's nothing, they don't need a password to do that to come to our website to look you guys up. And that's what your profile looks like. And you can see on the uh, right side, you have an opportunity to list commodities if you sell or, or, or have a service. Or if you're in construction, you have an opportunity to list all kinds of construction codes as well. If you want to be hub certified, now you'll wait for the hub office to go through your documents and go through your application. All right, documents. And I do have that in this package as well, so you'll have this when you leave. But these are some of the documents that we take a look at. And again, we're trying to get at who owns it and who's running it. And so, um, and these documents, and then we can request additional documents, but this is part of what we do. Now, the first uh, in boldface, the application, that's uh, separate. In the application, I have a full application attached in the back of this. But the application, you would have to have filled in, and that's straightforward. Next, the work resumes for all owners. Um, not, and, and, and even though we use the word resume, uh, ideally, part of your resume, or if not, we may ask you for it, is we may just ask you, what are your daily duties and responsibilities of this company? And I generally tell people, put, throw everything in there but the kitchen sink. I mean, some things you figure I might just assume, I'm, hey, if I own a company, I know they got to be doing this, I got to be doing that. It's OK with us if you list everything you can think of, from taking out the garbage to filing the taxes to negotiating contracts. I mean, frankly speaking, that can sometimes signify this person really is the one that's running this company. Because if they're doing this, this, and this, you know, good gracious sakes. So again, uh, proof of citizenship. Um, again, we take birth certificate or permanent residence. Now, of course, uh, some people can have, uh, I don't know what they call it, a green card or whatever, but they can have residency status, permanent residency status as well. So these are some, some of the ways we can identify or, or verify your, your residence or citizenship. Uh, ethnicity, uh, sometimes we can get it from those different uh, documents, but we also have an affidavit that's one of the forms on our website that you can just check a box, and I think it has to be notarized, where you declare your ethnicity. Uh, copies of professional licenses, if required. A lot of, a lot of what if, I, um, uh, if I'm a, um, well, to tell you the truth, if I'm a, a certain kind of contractor, I may not need, if I'm a bricklayer, I may not need a license to be a bricklayer. Uh, if I'm a plumber, I might need a plumber's license, or electrician might need an electrician. If I'm an architect or engineer, I might need a license. Um, however, you still should have maybe a privileged license or a business license. You know, your local city, county is going to always hit you up for 25, 50 bucks just because you say you got a business, you know. So that's a good, you know, that shows us that you're in business. And um, again, any kinds of communications you have with insurance companies, licensing agencies, and all that, let it be you they sending it to. Again, I can understand if you've got good help, good, good uh, staff, and they, I, may, I might have, you know, Sam for my staff person, and, and everything from the insurance office, everything from the city license office, everything from the tax office is coming to Sam. And then if I'm trying to get to whether Grover is really running this thing, I keep seeing Sam's name. 
So as many official communications with anybody out here, uh, ideally, just try to have as much of that coming to you as the boss as possible. Salaries, uh, again, that's not a deal breaker. Sometimes, again, when we're trying to get to who's really running the company, uh, some companies are fairly sophisticated. And so we, we're trying to see if, in fact, um, sometimes we're trying to say, well, gosh, I don't know whether A is running it or B. And then if A is making 100000 and B is making 25000 then you kind of think, OK, maybe that'll help me figure it out. Um, some folks I'll tell, because I know uh, if you're in business for yourself, you don't know what you're making. You don't have salary. And you can just say that in your own words. I mean, copies of signed leases for office or storage space. Again, we sort of don't, that's not a deal breaker because a lot of folks won't have an office and won't have a lease space. But if you do, again, if Sam's name is the one signing everything and not Grover, I'm wondering, does Sam really own this company? And he's just got Grover out there fronting for him or what? Um, but it would be helpful for certification, pro, uh, um, not just for us, but even if later on you decide to get certified with other entities. The more they see your name as owner on anything that's quote unquote official, the better. List of equipment, again, that's not a deal breaker. Some of you won't have equipment in what you do. It doesn't require equipment. So, um, and um, a list is fine. Sometimes the list agreements uh, and proof of title, again, that's not a deal breaker per se, but it might become relevant again if I'm trying to really figure out if, if Grover owns the company or Sam. Sometimes a list will do fine. You can say, I got you know, a 95 Chevy, a 2005 truck, a 99 this, and that'll be fine. But then if I'm really wondering if it's Sam or Grover, I'm saying, you know, you got, the, you got the lease papers to that car or that truck, or if you got the title to that truck or that car, sometimes I sort of use that information as secondary to find out who may or may not be the one in charge. Documented proof of contributions, that's um, in a particular case, maybe if you bought a company. Um, we've seen situations where I worked for Sam for years and um, now I want to buy Sam's company. And then um, I buy Sam's company. So we're saying, well, okay, well great, Grover, where'd you get the money to buy Sam's company? Um, well, if I got it from anybody in the world, that's fine. But if I say I got it from Sam, and they might say, well, if Sam loans you the money to buy the company from him, does this still mean that Sam has some active management and control of this company? Uh, statement prepared by your bank, um, that's um, again, again, if Sam's the only one signing checks, then I'm wondering if Grover's really in charge. So ideally, sometimes we'll, send a, we'll, we'll get a copy of the signature card, or we'll just get a, a letter from the bank saying that uh, Grover is the one authorized to sign um, checks in this account. Home state certification, that's only if you're out of state. We do recognize in some instances other certifications from other states. That's, uh, you know, that's case by case basis. And if you have a disability, then obviously we want proof of that disability. Corporations then have to, if you're a corporation, then you have a little more to send us. Everybody generally is gonna have to deal with these questions, forms or whatever. If you're a corporation, then obviously we want to see your articles. If you've issued some stock, we want to see it. Sometimes you haven't issued stock, and that's understandable. Uh, transfer ledger, you know, some have it, some don't. Shareholder agreement, sometimes that's not necessary, but sometimes it is. And again, if I see a shareholder agreement that shows that Sam has got all the authority and Grover has none, then I'm, I'm wondering about that. Minutes, again, sometimes we see in the minutes, Sam can make all the decisions and Grover can't. And that's in a meeting, so that tells us who's who and what's what. And obviously you have corporate bylaws. As, as a minimum, when you have a corporation, you're going to at least have your articles and you're going to at least have your bylaws. And so those two things are generally we got to see. And depending on the situation, you may or may not have issued stock or so forth. Some folks are LLCs now. The minimum there is at least the articles of organization, both the articles of incorporation by a corporation and the articles of organization by an LLC or file with the Secretary of State. So you get something back from the Secretary of State, a little certificate. We see a copy of that. And generally, LLCs will have an operating agreement. Corporations have bylaws and LLCs have operating agreements. You know, we tell folks just if you don't have it already, because uh, you don't have to have it to file with the Secretary of State. But it's, I think it's pretty easy to find the basic format online somewhere um, and, and that kind of thing. Or frankly, um, operating agreement. It's nothing fancy about that. 
I could say I am going to operate, me and Sam agree to operate this company according to the following 10 steps. And we can make up our own 10 ways we're going to operate and we can sign that at the bottom and date it and that's an operating agreement. Okay. Uh, partnership agreement, generally that speaks for itself and as I said, sometimes we have franchises. And why register? Again, I mentioned earlier that you have access to bidding opportunities 24-7. If I'm, up, if I'm a company looking for a hub subcontractor or a hub uh, seller of good or service, I could decide in the middle of the night I'm going to get online and see if I can find somebody. And so that's uh, that free listing or that listing in our database gives opportunities for folks to find you any time of day. It's free, as we mentioned. You, f you receive the email notifications. And again, those governmental entities seeking your product or service have a way to find you. Now, if you already are in the system, and once you are in the system, I mentioned going back in to change your address or email and so forth. Um, this is instructions about that. Again, we have it in the book here. Um, you don't want to go in under hub registration. Now you want to change vendor information. That, and that makes sense because you're going in to change something. Our certification is four years long. And once a year, you have to do an annual update. My update could expire today, January 4th, and I didn't send in my annual affidavit saying I'm still here and nothing's changed. Yeah. I could be at a bid opening this, <laughs> this afternoon, and I haven't done that, so now all of a sudden my name is inactive. Yeah. So the guy opens the bid and says, Grove is not certified. I said, what you mean I'm not certified? I'm certified to 2014. And so he says, I just went on the Hub's website. You're not there. And then they call our office and say, what's going on? They say they just looked me up and I'm not dead. I got this bid, I'm blah, blah, blah. And I said, whoa, 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 you just didn't do an annual affidavit. You're good. If you get that affidavit right in here quick, you know, sign it, get it notarized, fax it over, we'll get you right back up. So a lot of times we've had that happen and the person can still, you know, participate on the job or whatever. Uh, again, Purchasing Contract has a website. Again, uh, all of Purchasing and Contract in the state of North Carolina is under Purchasing Contract. And if you read their language there, um, they have a wide variety of products and services, total value of over $4 billion a year. And they are the central purchasing authority for all state departments, institutions, agencies, universities, community colleges, and also make certain services available to local governments public school systems, private colleges, and universities, and other non-state entities. Which is to say, you know, it's a lot going on. Uh, their website, again, gets you to bid opportunities, but that's the same website that we bounce you to from our page that talks about bid opportunities. All we're doing is putting you in purchasing contracts uh, website to if everything that's out there in every category that's been uh, listed. I will say there are contracts in state government that are not listed there. They may be small contracts. They may not be required to be listed on, uh, on the website. So uh, as part of hunting work, you know, you don't want to just think that everything is on the website and that's it. You don't have to look anywhere else. You still can get to know the agencies that your target, whatever your target is. And you say, look, do you have, uh, sometimes we call them informal contracts, small contracts, other kinds of contracts that may not be listed in the um, vendor link. And that's a good thing because some of those smaller informal contracts that may not be listed there give you an opportunity because those may be based more on the relationship that you can develop with that purchasing officer or that uh, person on at that place that's going to know about those contracts. They still have to solicit bids, but they may not have to blast it. So they may solicit among a smaller group which may give you more of an opportunity. Um, again, the State Construction Office, those of you who are in construction, it's, this is their web page, and if you are in construction, it really behooves you to be familiar with the State Construction's website, great website. Um, in particular, they have the State Construction Manual that you can print out and put in a notebook and know everything you need to know about uh, the rules and laws governing state construction and forms and documents. So this is an, uh, uh, the outline of the State Construction manual, you can see one of the chapters, bidding and contracts, that's a good chapter for anybody in the business to get a handle on. And also some of their forms and documents, uh, requirements and guidelines are, are good to know uh, on all of, all of these uh, construction jobs. 
a lot of what the State Construction Office um, has, or not a lot of what they have, but specifically they have in terms of hub participation, they have a document called Min um, Guidelines for Minority Participation. And they generally will attach that to every construction bid. And that's one of the forms you will find here. And lastly, if you are in construction, at the bottom of this contact page, you'll see state agencies, universities, community colleges. And what they, that generates a list of those contacts on these campuses that you might be able to stay in touch with and find out what's going on in that agency or on that campus. Every state agency has somebody on staff that's supposed to know about construction. They call them capital project coordinators. Everybody at, at, at every university has somebody that knows about their projects and every community college has somebody that knows about their construction projects. So you contact those folks and then you can, um, and you're just asking please um, notify me if you have any bid opportunities, small or large, informal or formal. I just want to have an opportunity to bid to work. The more bids they have, the more competitive, yeah, the more competitive the pricing. So if you call any of these agencies and ask to be uh, on a email notification list for bidding purposes in the future, you know, they're glad to do that for you. And again, lastly, uh, going back over your potential customers, we talked about all the state agencies. Um, again, the Division of Purchasing Contract, as I say, they have many, many job listings or many opportunities listed. The Office of State Property, I have not done much with them, but obviously they handle a lot of property. A state Construction Office I just talked about, and the NC Department of Transportation, I mentioned them briefly when it came to what we call disadvantaged business enterprises. They also have a small SBE status, a WBE status, an MBE status. They got a bunch of different certifications over there. And if you go over there, if you figure you do some kind of work that they will buy, then hey, you might as well go through that process too and be certified with them. State hospitals and institutions, you know, say your uh, Dix, uh, Dorothy Dix, or the Butner institutions, state hospitals around. They are part of the hub uh, system. They want to have hub participation, community colleges. Definitely the UNC, UNC systems, they've been the best clients or the best owners, buyers of hub, hub uh, goods and services. Certain local governments will, public and schools and local governments, they do uh, sometimes uh, follow some of our, uh, our guidelines, but again, as it says, note, the public schools and local governments are not subject to state rules. That makes sense. They, they're local governments, and uh, they may mirror a lot of our things or follow a lot of our procedures, and they may adopt our procedures and make them their procedures. 